Hey everyone, welcome to my silly YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this pretty nifty retro clock radio. It has a Bluetooth speaker right here, and then of course it has a clock. The reason I made this is because every time my wife asks me to do something, I tell her, I don't have the time to do that. She said, well, you better make the time. I thought, okay, I can do that. So that's where this came from. This is a pretty fun little build, so I hope you'll stick around to see how I made it. It has a wireless Bluetooth radio that I picked up from Rockler, and it has this clock kit that I picked up off Amazon. I will put a link to both of these items in the description below if you want to check those out. The only limit to what you can create with each of these or both of them together like I did is just your imagination. There's a lot of fun builds you can make with these. And of course, utilizing these in some builds could really make some great gifts. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Both of those would really help me out. Also, I know I'm not the first one that's made some cool things with these products, so if you've already done some builds with these, please feel free to leave some comments below and let us know what you've done. Well, let's get started. For this project, I picked up some Sapelli. I chose it because it's going to have a slight reddish tone to it when it's finished with the oil. Before running them through the planer, I cut them into four different pieces so I could decide which one would be the face of my project. And then I'm just going to plane them all down to about three quarters of an inch. The front piece has to be three quarters of an inch exactly for the clock mechanisms to work properly. Next I'm going to lay out the locations of the clock face and of the speaker. So what's important here is that I make sure the center points of each circle are lined up with each other. As far as the locations, I'm just trying to make sure the spacing is enough so that the numbers of the clock aren't too bunched up against where the speaker is going to sit. I'm not really working from any plans here. I'm just kind of laying it out as I go and seeing what looks right. It'll be a nice little surprise to see if it actually comes out looking good or not. The first hole I'm making is going to be the larger hole on the face of the project. And I'm just going to be using a three inch hole saw for this. The next holes are going to be where the speaker is going to sit as well as where the battery will be with inside the unit. So this first hole for the speaker is exactly one and seven eighths which is what the speaker requires per the instructions. So then I'm just going to trace the outline of that hole onto the next piece and I'm actually going to make the next hole a little bit bigger because as you'll see the battery for the speaker is larger than the actual speaker itself. So the space where the battery is going to be needs to be a little bit larger in order for it to sit in there. So I can't just make every hole the exact same size. And you can see how the battery is larger. So when I put the hole that was made larger on the second piece of wood, it does fit in there nicely. So my last hole needs to be 1 and 7 eighths again because the back of the speaker is the same as the front. So I'm just going to trace out where the hole is going to sit and use the center point and drill a smaller hole with the Forstner bit. Now I'm drilling the hole for the clocking mechanism and the instructions weren't actually specific on how big this hole should be but I went ahead and measured and I used a 5 16th inch drill bit and that works perfectly. To house the clock mechanism I needed a decent sized cavity so I'm just going to use a 3 inch hole saw and drill a three inch cavity on each piece of wood that's going to be glued together. And that way I can just install the clock mechanism and access it very easily. So this is just a matter of drilling a hole in the same spot on each piece of wood and stacking them up and making sure everything lines up before glue up. Now I'm ready for glue up and this is just a matter of applying and spreading a whole bunch of glue between each layer. I like to let the glue sit for just a little bit, maybe a minute before stacking the next layer, just so they don't slide quite as much. And then it's just a matter of repeating the process until all of the layers are together. Then I can just start clamping. Lots and lots of clamps. I just want to make sure I get even pressure all the way around because all of these edges will be exposed, so I don't want any weird little gaps or anything like that. So after drawing the rough shape of what I want this to look like, I'm going to move over to the bandsaw and cut along this outline. This doesn't need to be perfect because I am going to sand it to its final shape on a sander. Here's a first look at what the shape's going to look like and I'm pretty happy with it. 
and all the edges blended together really nicely. Moving on to the sander, I'm just going to sand it down to the outline that I drew. You just have to take your time and be careful and, and make sure you're constantly moving it along the sander or else you will get some bad grooves or over sanding in spots. I got some pretty cool little effects with the camera moving as the sander was going. I did not do that on purpose and I probably couldn't do it on purpose if I tried. And right here you can see some marks left by the bandsaw so I'm just going to make sure that I keep sanding until I can get those out. Just focusing on this area the sander makes pretty quick work of it and you can see that it makes a huge difference once I get those out. Looks and feels perfectly smooth. Taking a quick look at the final shape, I'm really happy with how it feels and with how it looks, but I am going to knock down these edges, and to do that, I'm just going to do it with a round over bit on the router table. I'm just using a quarter inch round over bit on this. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and sand the face and get off any of the pencil marks I had, and just make sure that all the edges are perfectly smooth from any leftover remnants of the router table. Now I'm going to make the little bars that will cover the speaker, and this is one of the effects that's really going to give it that retro feel that I'm looking for. And I'm going with a maple on this just to give it a contrast of color. Once I slice these down to pretty small, I'm just going to sand them to shape on the sander. And I'm trying really hard not to file my fingers or my fingernails down any more than they already are. I mean, I'm a woodworker, so my fingers are pretty rough as it is, but, but I don't need to make them any rougher. But actually, I'm using some pretty fine grit sandpaper here, so maybe it would make them nice and smooth. There's an idea for my next video, though. Sanding and buffing fingers to a smooth, semi-gloss finish. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. So after sanding all five down to a nice cylindrical shape, I can do a nice little dry fit here and see how they look. I'm pretty happy with how they fit and the spacing of them, but once I put this clock base on, I realize it looks just a little bit naked. It just needs a little something extra. Which unfortunately means I'm going to have to make some little wooden knobs to mimic radio controls. And this is definitely not the easiest process because I don't really have an easy way to make circles here. And I don't want to use dowels because I want it to have face grain. So I have to find a little circle to trace and then just sand it down to shape on the sander again. And these are really small little parts to sand so this is really going to test my ability not to sand my fingers off. Then I give it a quick little finish with some 320 grit sandpaper and I'm really happy with the results. Adding these little wooden knobs makes a big difference to the overall look and retro feel that I'm going for. I can glue on the knobs but the rails have to wait until I install the speaker. Which also means I'm going to need to put the oil in that space where the speaker is going to sit before I install the speaker. And the oil finish that I'm choosing for this project is this tried and true original oil finish. I really like this product for a number of reasons. It has no odor or toxic smells. It's completely food safe. It applies very easily. And for this project specifically, it will give that slightly yellow aged look, which I think will be really good for this project. I will put an Amazon link in the description below if you want to check this out. And of course, at the same time, support my silly little channel. To install the speaker, I'm just using some hot glue on both the front and the back. Then I make the connections and put it in and it's ready to go. And then I'm just going to use some super glue for these little rails. I needed something very strong compared to how much space it had to be glued onto. And this did the job just fine. I'm really happy with this little speaker. It was pretty easy to install and it works pretty well. So I would definitely recommend it for any project you might be considering. Again, for this tried and true finish, you don't need to open a bunch of doors, windows, or even wear a respirator. It has no odor really at all. It just sort of has a smell of something like a cooking oil. So to apply it, you just get a lint-free cloth, wipe it on pretty liberally, make sure that there's excess sitting on top, and then after about 15 or 20 minutes, you wipe off the excess with a dry clean cloth. And right away, you can see that that finish looks really beautiful on this wood. And here's a nice look at what is almost the finished product. The grain looks great and it was really important that I chose a specific piece for the front of this project because the grain was quite different throughout the length of the board. And I also really like the curved corners that I was able to achieve. To attach the numbers for the clock, I went ahead and printed off this clock face so that I could use it as a reference. 
This made it much easier to get all of my numbers in the exact right spot. I was actually surprised with how well the numbers stuck because the oil was not yet completely dry and these numbers actually stuck on there right out of the package. I didn't need any extra glue or adhesives. I had wanted to tape down my clock face just so it wouldn't move, but none of my tape was working, so I just had to hold it in place with my fingers. So if you're thinking about buying this, just know that the numbers have a pretty good adhesive on them. Well, there you have it. I think the numbers came out pretty much perfect. They look like they're exactly where they're supposed to be. So now I'm ready to install the clock mechanism. This is pretty straightforward, just going off of the instructions on the package. However, one issue that I did run into was that even though my board was three quarters of an inch thick, which is what the package calls for, three quarters of an inch thick, though you can buy other versions, I wasn't really able to use the washer and the nut, and it just wasn't screwing on there. So what I ended up doing is just removing the washer and just using the nut to install the clock mechanism. Luckily the hole I drilled was just the right size for the clock mechanism, so there wasn't any gap, so I was able to get away with not using a washer. So that might just be something to keep in mind if you're making something with this clock mechanism. But once I got past that, installing the hands was a breeze and the clock worked perfect. It's been keeping its time really well. Well, there it is, and I'm really happy with this project. It makes a really nice display piece, the clock mechanism works great, and I'm really happy with how the speaker functions with my phone. So if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it, and please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. See you next time, and happy building!